Neonatal shock. Shock is a state of acute circulatory dysfunction resulting in insufficient oxygen and nutrient delivery, eventually causing cell death. One important thing to remember here is hypotension, although frequent, but not always accompanies shock. Let's look at the type of shock with respect to underlying mechanism. Distributive shock, since low vascular resistance. Hypovolemic shock, since inadequate blood volume. Cardiogenic shock, since decreased cardiac function. And the obstructive shock, due to restriction to blood flow. A important thing to note here is that the most common mechanism in the preterm neonates is a combination of poor myocardial contractility and loss of vascular tone. Now let's see the each type in detail. Distributive shock that is due to lower vascular resistance. The causes are prematurity since impaired nitric oxide production. Neurological injury as in the severe hypoxia affecting neurovascular pathways, septic shock since inflammatory markers and anaphylaxis. Now let's dive more deeper. The septic shock. Septic shock is a combination of distributive, hypovolemic and cardiogenic components. Let's see how. As there is uncontrolled growth of bacteria, there occurs the release of endotoxins. These endotoxins combines with T cells and superactivates them, which leads to massive release of inflammatory markers. These markers causes vascular and tissue injury, thus leading to loss of vascular tone, increased permeability and injury to myocardium. Loss of vascular tone causes the pooling of blood Hence, poor distribution, increased permeability causes extravasation and leading to low volume state and myocardial injury causes decreased myocardial contractility and thus its functioning. Coming to the second type that is hypovolemic shock. The common causes of hypovolemic shock are placental hemorrhage which includes placental previa, abruptio placenti, twin twin transfusion syndrome. ICH or the intracranial hemorrhage, massive pulmonary bleed, disseminated intravascular coagulation, dehydration can also lead to hypovolemic shock, especially in the very low birth weight or extremely low birth weight there occurs insensible loss of water because of the increased surface area in proportion to the weight. Now let's see the third type, cardiogenic shock which occurs since large PDA which diverts the left ventricle blood away from the body into the pulmonary circulation, intrapartum asphyxia causing myocardial dysfunction, congenital, viral or bacterial infections, congenital malformations such as AV malformations, metabolic disturbances such as hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia or cardiomyopathies and PPHN that is persistent pulmonary hypertension. The last type is the obstructive shock which is due to retention in the blood flow. The causes are congenital as TAPVC, tricuspid atresia, coactation of aorta and or stenosis or the cause may be acquired like pulmonary embolism or pneumothorax. Now let's move ahead and see some important clinical features in the shock. Now, as hypotension sets in, the first mechanism which occurs in the body is directing the blood away from the skin muscles to the non-essential organs to the vital parts. The mechanism compensates the fall in the BP and hence here we get a near normal reading with subtle signs like poor perfusion, cold skin, weak pulses, delayed CRT, tachycardia and oligoyuria the compensation wherein the body manages the falling blood pressure is called compensated shock. But if the underlying cause remains untreated or is too severe then the compensation fails and gradually the BP falls leading to decreased perfusion to vital organs. 
as in the brain it leads to decreased consciousness lethargy and if preterm then it may cause the intracranial hemorrhage or in the elbw the abnormal neurocardiac dysfunction can be seen in kidney it may lead to complete shutdown or in the heart it may cause ischemia causing further damage this stage is called as the uncompensated shock if here no action is taken then the patient may land up in the irreversible stage now let's consider some of the clinical features indicating the type of shock suppose a child comes with the complaint of significant weight loss sunken eyes poor skin turgor dry or cracked skin immature skin use of phototherapy or the radiant warmer history in the neonate then one should consider insensible fluid losses as the major cause of shock now coming to the peripheral edema heart murmur hepatomegaly presenting neonate should be considered for cardiogenic shock but if the neonate comes with tachycardia poor urine output cool extremities skin mottling then consider sepsis but if the neonate comes with loss of vascular tone resulting in peripheral vasodilation capillary leak tachycardia increased cardiac output bounding peripheral pulses and hypotension which is usually low diastolic blood pressure then consider warm shock increase in vascular tone resulting in the peripheral vasoconstriction prolonged capillary refill time decreased peripheral pulses depressed cardiac output and hypotension that is usually low systolic blood pressure or combined hypotension should be considered for cold shock now let's see one of the important topics of the shock that is septic shock septic shock follows a slight different mechanism which is due to the release of the inflammatory mediators which causes increased capillary permeability and the vasodilation this causes decrease in svr or the systemic vascular resistance hence one must look for fall in the blood pressure along with the wide pulse pressure to assess the patient now let's see since the blood pressure is one of the most important factors in determining the shock hence it is very important to know the correct measurement techniques the non invasive blood pressure techniques are the non invasive bp measurement should be done by using a oscillometric type of bp instrument as shown the bp cuff size should be around 45% width to the arm circumference ideal time to make measure the bp is when the either the baby is sleeping or quiet note as the cuff is fastened the neonate shall not be disturbed for at least 15 minutes one should take at least 3 readings before commenting the final status let's move ahead once we correctly measure the bp let's see how to determine the hypotension we use nomogram of mean arterial pressure in the newborn up to 72 hours of life with respect to gestational age we can simply remember if it has any time the mean arterial pressure is below 30 or is below the age of the newborn in weeks then it is to be considered as hypotension for example if a preterm neonate of 32 weeks of gestation has bp below 32 then it roughly indicates that the baby is having hypotension now let's move ahead important investigations needed to be done here are abg to assess the hypoxia and acidosis chest x ray cbc for anemia and septic screen coagulation studies if dic is suspected serum glucose electrolytes calcium for metabolic disorders renal function test such as urea creatinine blood culture and most importantly and recently upcoming the most efficacious test that is functional echocardiography let's see functional echocardiography it is a powerful add on in the management of shock it tells about the cardiac anatomy cardiac output and the volume status in a neonate 
it includes the targeted neonatal echo or the neonatologist performed echo functional echo allows us the objective evaluation of underlying pathophysiologies and thus choosing the right therapies it also helps us in serial monitoring of response to therapy serial objective evaluation of the cardiac status which on documentation allows research let's see it in more detail left ventricular output and right ventricular output are equal in older children and adults however in neonates the presence of shunts may result in unequal output from both the ventricles hence superior vena cava flow or the svc flow is considered as a surrogate marker for systemic cardiac output even in the presence of shunts note is if svc flow is less than 50 ml per kg per minute or rvo that is right ventricular output is less than 150 ml per kg per minute then we may consider it to be as lower limit to initiate the therapy through echocardiography we can assess the preload by measuring the ivc collapsibility as in the spontaneously breathing baby or the ivc variability in the ventilated baby we can also know about the cardiac contractility by measuring the fractional shortening of the heart muscles in the parasternal long axis view and also the ejection fraction which can be measured one may note here that in neonates the fs that is the fractional shortening is preferred over the ejection fraction